Hi everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage. We're here at another event in person. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We got the CNCF KubeCon, Cloud Native Con for in person 2021, and it's, we're back. It's a hybrid event, and we're streaming live on all channels, as well as all the folks watching. We got great guests kicking off the show here from the co chairs from Cataracos, is that right? Cataracos. Cataracos, that's a tough name to say. Danielle Cook, who's the vice president at Fairwinds, and John Foreman, director at Accenture. Thanks for coming on, your co chair. Your third co chair is not here, but you yeah. guys are here to talk about the cloud maturity model. Pretty mature. Funding is flowing, tons of announcements. Uh, we're going to have a, a startup on $200 million they're announcing uh, in funding and observability of all, of all hot spaces. Mm -hmm. um, so the maturity is, it's the journey in the cloud native space now is I've crossed over to mainstream. That's the, we've been telling that story for a couple of years now. You guys have been working on this. Tell us about the cloud maturity model you guys worked on. So we got together earlier this year because we, um, four of us had been working on maturity models. So Simon Forster, who is one of the co-chairs who isn't here, he had worked on a maturity model that looked at your legacy journey all the way to cloud native. Um, myself, I had been part of the Fairwinds team working on the, the Kubernetes maturity model. So, and then um, we have Robbie, who's not here, and John Foreman, who we all got together. They had worked on a maturity model, and we put it together and have been working since February to go, what is cloud native maturity, and what are the stages you need to go through to achieve maturity? So, put this together, and now we have this great model that people can use to take them from. I have no idea what cloud native is to the steps they can take to actually be a mature organization. And you know you made it when you have a book here, so just hold that up to the camera real quick. Yes. So you can see it. It's very much in spirit of the community. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but in all seriousness, the book's great, but this is a real need. What was the pain point? What was jumping out at you guys on the problem? Was it just more people like trying to get more cloud native? They want to go move faster? Was it confusing? What were the problems you solving? Well, a big thing is if we saw from the beginning, right, there was during the cloud, Journey to DevSecOps, and the Kubernetes being a thing, then there's journey to DevSecOps, uh, to Kubernetes as well, but everything is leading to cloud native. It's about the journey to cloud native. So everybody you know, who I talk to, they go, John, the ecosystem's an eyesore, man. If I look at, you know, <laughs> landscape I, you I the, map, the whole map thing. I need, it's just like, the trail map, it's just so confusing, what do we do? So every client we go to, I reinvent the wheel on how to get them from zero to hero. So we just put together a model instead that we can re, you know, reuse you know, as a good reference architecture. So from that is a premise of how we, we built the cloud native training model you have with us, with us today. So it's a five scale model from one to five. Most clients today are out of two. You know, but our job is getting to a five where they could be optimized and really rock and roll and, and to yeah. do these different things. You know, it's interesting. I love these inflection points and, and you know, being a student of history in the tech business, there's moments where things are the new thing, and they're really truly new things, like first time operationalized DevOps. I mean, the hardcore DevOps are early adopters, we've been doing that, you know, we know that. But now mainstream's like, okay, this is a real disruption in a positive way, so the transformation's happening. And it's new, new roles, new, new workflows, new uh, team formations. Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's complicated in the sense yes. of getting it up and running. So I can see the need. How can you guys share your, your data on where people are, because now you have more data coming in, you have more people doing DevOps, more cloud native development. You mentioned security, everyone's shifting left. Where is the data to tell you? I mean, is it, as you said, people are more like a two, or more, what's, the, what's the data say? So we've had, so part of pulling this model together was your experience at Accenture helping clients, the Fairwinds um, experience helping people manage Kubernetes, and so it's from, thousands of clusters that people have managed going, okay, where are people? And, and they don't even know where they are. So if we provide the guidelines from them, they can read it and go, oh, I, I am at about to. So the data is actually anecdotal from our experiences at our different companies. Um, but we, you know, we, we've made it so that you can self-identify. But we've also recognized that you might be at stage two for one application, mm -hmm. but five for another application. So just because you're on this journey doesn't mean everything is in yeah. stage five. It's not boilerplate. It's, right. it's really it's unique to every enterprise because they everyone's different. You yes. might be on journey, put you on journey yeah. with these things. Yeah, a big part is also uh, through, through this maturity part one through five. Your know, clients are also in denial. You know, so so Mr. CX level. 
you are level two. We are not. There's no way we've been doing this stuff for years. We've got to be a five. <laughs> no, sorry, no. you're at a two. <laughs> yeah. So and that's they, a gift. <laughs> there's huge denial yeah. also about this because yeah. people think they do cloud native, they're out there rolling, and I'm looking at what they're doing, and I go, okay, do you do runtop security? And they go, what's that? I go, exactly. Yeah. So we really need to take peel back the onion, start from stage zero, and get where you need to be in the process. All right, so I want to ask more about the um, the process and how that relates to the themes are involved. What are some of the themes around the maturity model that you guys can share that you see that people can look at and say, how do I self-identify? What's the process? What can I expect? Well, one of the things we did when we were putting it together was we realized that there were themes coming out amongst the maturity model itself. So we realized there's a whole people layer, there's a whole policy layer, process, and technology. So this maturity model does not just look at, hey, this is the tech you need to do. It looks at how you introduce cloud native to your organization, how you take the people along with it, what policies you need to put in place, the, the process. So we did that first and foremost. But one of the things that was super important to all of us was that security was ever present throughout it because as everything is shifting left, you need to be looking at security from day one and considering how it's going to happen and roll out from your developers all the way to your compliance people. Um, it's super important and one of the themes throughout. So, so it would be safe to say then that security was a catalyst for the maturity model. Security because you, you got to be mature, I mean security, yeah. you don't, Pull around security. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to last year, when I created the CKS program, for CNCF, I worked with you know, Cheryl Hunt from CNCF. We put together the Kubernetes Certification Security Special Program. I saw a need where security was a big gap in Kubernetes. <laughs> Nobody knew anything about it. They wanted to use the old rack and stack ways of doing it. They wanted to, to use their trim micro tools from you know, yesteryear, and that doesn't work no more. You need, you need a new set of tools for Kubernetes, it's a different, there's no upbringing system, it's a different way of doing things. So that knowledge is critical. So I think you know, part of this, again, on this journey was getting certification out there for people to understand how to do it better. Now the next phase of that now is how do we put all these pieces together and build this roadmap? Well, it's a great um, group you guys have, the working groups, hard to pronounce the name, but uh, it's a great effort because one of the things I'm hearing, and we've been reporting this on the Cube and Silicon Angle is, the, the modern software developers want speed and they don't want to wait for the old slow groups now. And security and IT are viewed as blockers and like to th slow things down. And so you're starting to see a trend where those groups can provide policy and then start put feeding up uh, data models that allow the developers in real time to do their coding, to shift left and to be efficient and move on and code, not be waiting for weeks or days. This is where GitOps comes to play. So today, it's the age of GitOps right now. GitOps is now emerging where all these things are happening now, where everything is code. Policy is code, security is code, policy is code, config is code. That is the new place we're in. And again, more confusion, more need for a category office. Okay, what's your thoughts on that? So I think what's really important is enabling service ownership, right? You need the developers to be able to do security, see policy, see it live, and make sure that you know, you're not, your configuration isn't you know, stopping the build or getting into production. So you know, we made sure that was part of the maturity model. Like you need to be looking, continuous scanning throughout, checking security, checking policy, what is your process? Um, and we, you know, we made that ever present so that the developers are the ones who are making sure that you're getting to Kubernetes, you're getting to cloud native, and you're doing it successfully. Well, successful. the folks watching, if you don't know the cloud native landscape slide, the ecosystem slide, it's getting bigger and bigger. There's more new things emerging. You see the role of software abstractions coming in, automation and AI are coming in. So it makes it very challenging if you want to jump right in. Lifting and shifting to the cloud is really easy check. Been there, done that. But companies want to refactor their applications, not just replatform. Refactoring means completely taking advantage of these higher level services, so, so it's going to be hard to navigate. So I guess, with all that being said, what's you guys' advice to people who are saying, I need the navigation, I need to have the blueprints. What do I do, how do I get involved, and how do I leverage this? So we want people to, you can go on to GitHub and check out our group and read the maturity model. You can understand it, self-identify where you're at, but we want people to get involved as well. So if they're seeing something that's like, actually this needs to be adjusted slightly, please join the group, the Cartographist group. Um, you can also get copies of our book available on the show. So if you, um, <laughs> If you know you can read it and it takes you line by line in a really playful way as yeah. to where you should be at in yeah. the maturity model. Yeah. And on top of that, 
if you come Thursday, we'll sign your book. And you're worth <laughs> a lot of money one day, I promise. You, you guys are good. I got to ask, you know, the final question is like more and more, just more personal um, uh, commentary, if you don't mind. As teams start to change, this is obviously causing a lot of positive transformation, if done right. So the roles and the teams are starting to change. Here, SREs are now not just the DevOps guys provisioning, they're part of the, of the scale piece. The developers shifting left. New kind of workflows, the role of certain engineers and developers, now new team formations. How are you guys seeing that evolve? Is there any trends that you see around how people are reconfiguring their team makeup? I think a lot of things is going to a single penny glass today. Where I'm taking dev and ops and I'm putting on one panel where I can see everything going on in my environment, which is very critical. So right now we're seeing a big trend where every client wants to be able to have the holy grail of a single penny glass. To drive to that, but for you to get there, there's a lot of work you gotta do. It does overnight, that will not happen. And that's where this short model, I think, again, will enhance that ability to do that. Yeah. There's a cultural shift happening. I mean, people yeah. are changing, there's new skill sets, and you know, obviously there's a lot of people who don't have the skills. So it's super important that people work with Kubernetes, get certified, use the maturity model to help them know what skills they need to And it's a living develop. document too. It's not, I mean, a book, and now it's a living book. Absolutely. It's going to evolve. Uh, what areas you think are going to come next? So you guys have to predict, if you had to see kind of where the pieces are going. Uh, obviously with cloud, everything's getting you know, more Lego blocks to play with, more coolness you have in, the, in this world. What's coming next? What's, what do you guys see? Any, any uh, forecasts or <laughs> So insight? we're working with each one of the, the tag groups within the CNCF to help us <laughs> build it out and come up what, with what is next based on their expertise yeah. in the area. So we'll see lots more coming. Um, and we hope that the maturity model grows and becomes something that everybody relies on and that they can use alongside the landscape and the trail map and, um, yeah. and actually be able to navigate. It's super this valuable. Ecosystem. I think you guys, any plug for any people who want to, how they join? Uh, if I want to get involved, how do I, what, what do I do? Absolutely. So um, you can join the Cartographist group. You can check us out on GitHub and see all the information there. Um, we have a Slack channel within the CNCF and we have calls every other Tuesday that people can Join the calls. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations, well needed. And super important as people want to navigate and start building out. You know, you got the edge right around the corner there. It's happening real fast. Data at the edge. You got cloud at the edge, Azure, AWS, Google. I mean, they're pushing really hardcore 5G. A lot of changes. Lot of Everybody's changes. multi cloud today. Yeah. Not one client yeah. is, one, is one cloud. Everything's multi cloud, common control plane everywhere. One part life of DevOps. Yeah. That's the holy grail, right? It's distributed computing back in the modern era. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you for having appreciate us. It. Okay, I'm John Furrier here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2021, in person. It's a hybrid event. We're here live on the floor, show floor, bringing you all the coverage. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned all day, the next three days here in Los Angeles. Thanks for watching. Thank you.